Asexual and sexual reproduction 214.1 Asexual and sexual reproduction 1 Reproduction is the biological process in which an organism give rise to young one offspring similar to itself same kind. 2 It is one of the fundamental characteristics of a living organism and it enables the continuity of species generation after generations. 3. It involves the transmission of the genetic material from the parental generation to the offspring generation, ensuring the characteristics of the species and perpetuating the characteristics of parental organisms. 314.1 Asexual and sexual reproduction 4. There are two basic types of reproduction, namely, asexual and sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction, a process resulting in the production of genetically identical offspring from one parent. The offspring have the same genes, and therefore the same inherited traits, as the parent. Sexual reproduction, a process involving the fusion of the nuclei of two gametes to form a zygote and the production of offspring that are genetically different from each other. The offspring have a different set of traits compared to either parent. 414.1 Asexual and sexual reproduction 5 Sexual reproduction Asexual reproduction number of parents 2 Biparental 1 Unaparental production of gamete, sperm and ovum, yes no fertilization, fusion of gametes, yes no genetic variation high low offspring not identical to parents identical to parent resistant high able to withstand adverse environmental conditions and diseases low diseases can easily wipe out entire colony rate of reproduction slower faster an example of asexual reproduction 6 tubers a tuber is an enlarged part of a plant that swells with starch and is used as energy storage. Tubers can either be root or stem tubers. Tubers help plants perennate, survive winter or dry months, provide energy and nutrients, and are a means of asexual reproduction. When fall comes, the above-ground structure of the plant dies, but the tubers survive underground over winter until spring, when they regenerate new shoots that use the stored food in the tuber to grow. Tubers potato, an example of asexual reproduction 7 runners, the runners, aka, stalin, play a key role in the asexual reproduction of the plants. Such as those found on strawberry plants, are slender horizontal stems that spread outward from the main plant. Entirely new plants can develop from nodes located at intervals on the runners, each node can give rise to new roots and shoots. Runner, strawberry, an example of asexual reproduction 8, binary fission, binary fission is a type of asexual reproduction typically observed in prokaryotes and a few single-celled eukaryotes. It is a separation of the parent cell into two new daughter cells. This process happens with the division and duplication of the parent's genetic matter into two parts. Here, each daughter cell receives one copy of its parent DNA. However, asexual mode of reproduction has a significant drawback. All resultant cells are genetically identical, mirror copies of each other and the parent cell. If a parent cell is vulnerable to an antibiotic, then all resultant daughter cells are vulnerable too. A large bacterial cell reproduces asexually by dividing into two. The connection bridge, which later will be broken. An example of asexual reproduction 9 budding, some simple animals can reproduce asexually. In stable water conditions with ample food, especially in spring and summer, hydras reproduce by budding, including yeast. A new hydra starts as a bud, forming on the side of a hydra's body, it grows and eventually breaks away as a clone of the original. When conditions are harsh, often before a cold winter, sexual reproduction occurs in some hydras, producing unfertilized eggs. A hydra can have several buds at once. It is well suited for a rapid population buildup. A bud starts as a small bump on the body column of the parent, then grows, finally drops off as independent life. An example of asexual reproduction 10 Fragmentation, a type of asexual reproduction where an organism upon maturation breaks down into fragments, or pieces, and each fragment grows into a new organism. It takes place in multicellular organisms only as the body has to break into two or more pieces for the process to take place. These fragments later grow into individual organisms that are exact copies of the parent organisms without any variation, thus showing the asexual mode of reproduction. Some common examples, spirogyra, flatworms, sponges, fungi, sea stars. Planaria, a flatworm, fragments will then start developing into a new organism. Test 28411 The diagram shows a plant that is producing small plantlets. Which statement about the plantlets is correct? A. They are genetically different from the parent plant. B. They are genetically identical to the parent plant. C. They are produced as a result of the fusion of nuclei. D. They are produced by fertilizing the flowers.
Sexual reproduction 284.12 In sexual reproduction, the parent organism produces sex cells called gametes, sperm and egg. Two of these gametes join and their nuclei fuse together is called fertilization. The new cell formed is called a zygote. The zygote contains chromosomes from both its parents. Sexual reproduction allows for the reshuffling of genetic material, both within and between individuals of one generation, resulting in the potential for an extraordinary array of offspring, each with a genetic makeup different from that of its parents. Sperm ovum fertilization zygote baby gametes 284-13 gametes are an organism's reproductive cells, sperm and egg. Gametes are haploid cells, and contain only one set of chromosome, half of the genetic information, as a somatic cell. These reproductive cells are produced through a type of cell division called meiosis, a type of cell division that halves the number of chromosomes. When the haploid cells from male and female fuse together during fertilization, it forms a diploid cell, have two sets of chromosomes. Most mammals are diploid, i.e., they have two homologous copies of each chromosome in the cells. The somatic cells in humans are diploid cells. Sperm, N23 chromosomes ovum, N23 chromosomes zygote, 2N46 chromosomes baby, 2N46 chromosomes gametes, 284 14 sperm, N ovum, N zygote, 2N baby, 2N haploid diploid haploid cells contain only one set of chromosomes, N diploid, as the name indicates, contains two sets of chromosomes, 2N haploid cells are formed by the process of meiosis. Diploid cells undergo mitosis. In the higher organism, such as humans, haploid cells are only used for sex cells. In the higher organism, such as humans, all other cells besides sex cells are diploid. Examples of haploid cells are gametes, male or female germ cells. Examples of diploid cells include blood cells, skin cells and muscle cells. These cells are known as somatic cells. Difference between haploid and diploid. Test 284-15 sperm, N, ovum, N, zygote, 2N, baby, 2N, in the higher organism, such as humans, which of the following is correct? A. All other cells, except sex cells are diploid B. All cells are diploid C. Sex cells are diploid D. None of the above test 284-16 what are the characteristics of asexual reproduction? Fusion of gamete nuclei genetic variety in the offspring ABXCXDX by 14.2 sexual reproduction in flowering plants 17 14.2 flowers 286 1 flowering plants, also called angiosperms, use a sexual mode of reproduction. 2. Reproduction in plants, mainly, revolves around the flower, which has both the male and the female gametes. Flower is the reproductive organ of the plant. 3. Majority of plants are hermaphrodite, able to produce both male and female gametes. 18 14.2 flowers 286 19 male parts, stamens are made up of the pollen, producting anther supported on a stalk called the filament. Female parts, stigma, adapted for receiving pollen. Inside the ovary are one or more smaller structures called ovules that contain the egg cells, ova that are the female gamete. 14.2 flowers 286 state the functions of the sepals, petals, anthers, stigmas and ovaries. Sepals, a hard layer that protects the flower while it is a bud. Petals, come in different, often vibrant, colors to attract insects for pollination. Anthers, contain pollen sacs, where pollen grains are formed. Pollen grains contain the male gametes, sex cells required for fertilization. Stigma, a sticky surface that catches the pollen during pollination. Ovaries, contain ovules, which develop into seeds when they are fertilized. 20. Pollination 288 1. Pollination is the, transfer of pollen from the anther to the stigma. 2. A plant that self-pollinates is still undergoing sexual reproduction as it is making gametes by meiosis so every gamete will be genetically different, and then fertilizing them in a random process. 3. The offspring of self-pollination will still be genetically different from each other but the total genetic variation will be less than if DNA from two different individuals is used. 4. The vast majority of plants cross-pollinate. They transfer pollen from the anther of one flower to the stigma of a flower on a different plant. 5. Cross-pollination can be brought about by insects and by the wind. 21. Pollination 288 Insect Pollination 1. Insect pollination uses insects that land on the flower to carry pollen. 2. As insects move around within the flower, some pollen become caught onto the insect's body. The insect therefore physically carries pollen and successful pollination occurs when it rubs its body against a stigma of the same flower, self-pollination, or a different flower, cross-pollination. Wind pollination 1. 
Wind pollination uses the wind to carry pollen. 2. Pollen that gets carried by the wind may end up on the stigma of the same flower, self-pollination, or a different flower cross-pollination. 22. Pollination 294. Compare the different structural adaptations of insect-pollinated and wind-pollinated flowers. 23. Insect-pollinated wind-pollinated petals present, large, colored, scented, to attract insects, absent or small and green nectar present to attract insects, absent stigma inside the flower outside the flower, feathery stamen inside the flower outside the flower, long pollen smaller amount, rough, sticky, spiky, easier to carry by insects, large amounts, smooth, small, easier to carry by wind, fertilization 291241. When a flower has been pollinated, there will be pollen grains that have landed on the stigma. 2. If they are from a different individual of the same species of plant, then triggered by sugary chemicals on the stigma the pollen grain starts to grow a tube called a pollen tube which grows down through the style. 3. It enters the ovule through a tiny opening in the ovule called the micropyl. Fertilization 291254. The egg cell inside the ovule is now fertilized. It has a full set of chromosomes and is now called a zygote. 5. After fertilization the petals, sepals, stamens, stigma and style all dry out and wither. 6. The ovary develops into a structure called the fruit and inside the fruit, each ovule develops into a seed. Test 292-26 The diagram shows a flower. In which structure do seeds develop? Seeds 292-271. Seeds are tough structures that have evolved to allow the embryo plant to undergo a period of dormancy before the seed germinates. 2. The function of fruit is seed dispersal. 3. It is vital for the parent plant that its offspring do not start to grow right next to themselves as they will be in direct competition with the parent for water and minerals from the soil and for sunlight. 4. In some plants the fruit has evolved to disperse the seed using the wind. Sycamore seeds have a propeller blade to slow down their fall from the tree. Dandelions give each seed a tiny parachute and can be carried for many miles in the wind. Seeds 292-28 Animals are more commonly used as couriers to get the seeds away from the parent plant. The fruit may be sweet and attractive to eat. The fruit may have hooks or barbs to get stuck to the animal's body. Seeds 292-29 Germination Germination is the development of a plant from a seed or spore after a period of dormancy. Factors affecting seed germination Water Water moves into the seed, causing it to swell. This allows the embryo to begin growing. Oxygen, used in respiration to produce energy for growth. Temperature, the seed contains enzymes, e.g. for respiration, which will work faster at the plant's optimum temperature. This is why seeds are dormant in the winter and grow again in the spring. Seeds 292-30 Investigation of germination set up boiling tubes each containing 10 cress seeds on cotton wool. Leave tubes in set environmental conditions for a period of time. Tube germination A, no water, no B, control, yes C, no oxygen, no D, cold, no cress seed, dry cotton wool, moist cotton wool, layer of oil, cress seeds, cress seeds, boiled and cooled water, moist cotton wool, tube A, tube B, tube C, tube D, test 284-31, the table shows the conditions provided for four sets of seeds. Which of the seeds germinate? Oxygen water carbon dioxide A, B, X, X, C, X, D, X, 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 comparing self-pollination and cross-pollination 294-32 self-pollination is the transfer of pollen from the another of one flower to the stigma of the same flower, or a different flower of the same plant. Advantages, only one parent required so less reliance on pollinators. Less competition among offspring. Disadvantages, less variation, since genes are all from the same plant. Less adaptable to changing environment and resistance to disease. Cross-pollination is the transfer of pollen from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower on a different plant, of same species. Advantages. Increased variation. Greater adaptability to changing environment and more resistant to disease. Disadvantages. More reliance on pollinators. 14.3 Advantages and Disadvantages of Different Methods of Reproduction 293-33 Comparing Self-Pollination and Cross-Pollination 293-34 Advantages of Asexual Reproduction Only one parent is required. This is helpful for organisms which live in desolate environments where finding a mate is difficult. Can reproduce quickly. Large quantities of offspring can be produced quickly to rapidly populate an area. This helps to dominate a habitat and prevent competition from other species. It takes less energy to reproduce asexually. Disadvantages of asexual reproduction. Lack of diversity. All offspring are genetically identical. 
prone to extinction, as each organism produced is genetically identical, a disease which harms one will be dangerous to all of them. Cannot adapt. Organisms are adapted to one environment and cannot adapt to changes. If the environment changes, e.g. the temperature rises, they are likely to be killed. Overpopulation. Too many offspring may be produced. Comparing self-pollination and cross-pollination 293-35 advantages of sexual reproduction, wide diversity, each offspring is genetically unique. Promotes survival. Each organism is unique so disease cannot spread as easily. Organisms can adapt. As each offspring is born with different genes, those with a genetic advantage are more likely to survive and pass their positive traits on to their offspring, whilst those with a genetic disadvantage are more likely to die without producing offspring. This allows the species to evolve through natural selection. Disadvantages of sexual reproduction. Two parents are required. It may be difficult for some species to find mates, especially when there is an imbalance of males and females in an area or if the species is endangered. Fewer offspring produced. It takes longer and requires more energy to produce offspring, therefore it is less efficient than asexual reproduction.